Hey everyone! So as someone who makes a lot of video content, I'm constantly searching for the best place to store my files. That means somewhere that offers lots of storage space and that I can trust to keep my files secure. I also look for fast upload and download performance, plus a service that makes it easy for me to share my files with my colleagues, friends, and family, or with someone who produces my videos. It's been a long, long journey to finding the best. CloudWords exists since 2010, roughly. So we've been testing cloud storage services since 2010, 14 years. So we know a thing or two um, about cloud storage services and where to store files and which ones have the best performance. And now I'm pleased to say I have a solid selection of the best cloud storage for video creators, which I'm going to share with you in this video. And as you heard in this intro, this is a video about cloud storage. Now, I'm not talking about my offline process with my network attached storage that I have here in my office studio. That will obviously be part of a completely different video because it's a bit more involved but obviously, if you want to see that video, stay tuned, subscribe. I'll definitely cover that as well very soon. Slight spoiler alert. The services here, the cloud storage services here I'm talking about in this video are iDrive, Sync.com, pCloud, Google Drive, and iStrive. You'll want to stick around until the end though, because that's when I'll share my number one choice of cloud storage for video creators. And each service has different strengths and weaknesses, and it really depends what it is that you're looking for and on your use case. If you're a solo creator who just needs the cloud for a backup archive for your video files, then you might need a completely different solution than someone who has a bigger video production and works with clients and other freelancers to ship video files across the globe. My top recommendation works for both use cases, just FYI. Before I share the best cloud storage for video creators, I want to give an honorable mention to Mega. Mega deserves its flowers because of the amount of storage space available. The top tier plan offers 16 terabyte of storage space. Now, that is less than what I have currently in my network attached storage space. I, I operate on 32 terabytes at the moment. I don't need 32 terabytes, but it's good to have it. And 16 terabytes is considerably more than most of all the other options that I'll be mentioning in this video if you want to stay on the personal plan. There are business plans, obviously, that have a bit more storage, but 16 terabyte on the personal plan is already quite large. Also, Mega has zero knowledge encryption, so it's a plus for those who really care about privacy because if you don't want other people to access your video files or even the company to access your video files that you're storing your files with. So privacy is very important. And Mega is a bit pricey though, costing around $28 per month if you sign up for an annual subscription on the 16 terabyte plan. Also, it doesn't come with a network drive like other choices in this video, which makes it a bit, uh, I would say less flexible. And one more thing. You can get up to 30 gigabytes of free storage space for the first uh, 12 months of your subscription. So I recommend checking it out and you can find the link to all my recommendations, obviously down in the description box below, you know the drill. All right, moving on to the main options. I'm going to start with iDrive. This may surprise some of you as iDrive is best known for being an online backup solution for people who store their files locally, but it's actually a hybrid solution as it offers cloud storage as well. There are a few reasons it's good for video creators and there are a few reasons why it's bad for video creators. The first one being is that it has no file size limits. So if you just exported a video that's say 400 gigabytes, right? You can upload it as one file without any problems. This feature is only available through the desktop app and won't function the same on mobile or on your web browser, but you wanna do this on a desktop anyway, in my opinion. The 
platform also offers instant playback, so you can watch video content inside the app without having to first download it to your computer. And this feature is especially useful if you're sharing content with others, as it also means they don't have to download large files. I'm sure they'll be grateful for the free space on their hard drive. And privacy buffs like me will like that iDrive offers zero knowledge encryption. It's an opt-in feature which you must select when creating an account. And don't forget that because you won't be able to do that 180 days later. In terms of speed, it seems iDrive has done a lot of work to make things run faster. We got a five gigabyte folder onto the cloud in just over six minutes. That's considerably faster than the platform's previous performance. It took about seven minutes to download the same folder. Now, just one thing how we tested upload speed. Essentially, what we did is we test all cloud storage services on a virtual machine, on a virtual Windows machine. Technically, we have one gigabyte connection there, but obviously we're not testing uploads and downloads with one gigabyte because it doesn't really resemble uh, a real life scenario of most users. And what we do is we limit the upload and download speeds to 100 megabits, right? So any download and upload speeds that I'm sharing in this video will be with the 100 megabit cap in mind. One struggle I always have as a video creator is finding something that offers enough storage space and the struggle is real for those of us working with very large files. On a personal account, iDrive offers up to 100 terabytes of storage space, and that plan would cost you around 60 bucks a month if you sign up to the annual option. There are team and business plans also available, and all in all, I find iDrive to be reasonably priced. Is it my top recommendation? Not so much. And we're gonna look at other choices that you might wanna find interesting in this video as well. Next up is Google Drive, which is definitely the most well-known option in this selection. If you're someone who creates the odd video every now and then, I reckon Google Drive's free plan may be enough for you. It's one of the more generous free plans as it offers 15 gigabytes of storage space. And by the way, if you want free cloud storage, check out this video here right at the top where we've talked about free cloud storage providers all along. Now, Google Drive doesn't offer the unlimited file size feature for uploads, but it's not all bad news. You can upload 750 gigabytes within a 24 hour period. And for content creators like me, this is really more than enough, not once I hit a roadblock with this file, with this limit of upload um, capacity per day. Here's the deal. I'm not shooting raw, nor do I have like a big fancy red camera <laughs> uh, that shoots ginormous files. I'm shooting on a Sony a7S III in 4K and the file sizes are reasonable and the image out of the camera is great without much color correction or editing and that's it. With Google Drive, if you upload a single file up to five terabyte, even if it breaks the 750 gigabyte limit, Google will still allow you to complete the upload. So really there's hardly limit at all, but keep in mind, you won't be able to upload anything else until the next day. I've never used this. I've never needed to upload that many files, but it's really up to you and your video production. The reason I like Google Drive is because it makes collaboration pretty easy. All I have to do is copy a link, set some user permissions, and I'm ready to share. Anyone who has access to the video can leave comments too, making it easy to work on video content with my remote team. Don't get me wrong, easy file sharing isn't unique to Google Drive, but with its clean and well laid out user interface, I'd have to say it's really one of the best in this department. And obviously it integrates very well with other Google services like Google Docs and spreadsheets, making planning and organization of videos really a breeze. So how quickly can we get our videos into Google's cloud? Pretty quick, to be fair. Uploads and downloads were just over seven minutes for a five gigabyte folder and performance was consistent and very stable. If there was, one reason I wouldn't recommend Google Drive, it would be 
You guessed it, maybe because of privacy. There's no zero knowledge encryption. So in theory, Google can scan your files. That's a big no, no for me. Google has never had a great track record when it comes to user privacy either. So if you really want to keep your files private, it won't really be for you. For single use, 10 terabyte of storage space is all you can get with Google Drive. If you are a professional video creator, I imagine this won't be nearly enough unless you're okay with uploading and deleting files when you no longer need them. And if you're shooting RAW or 8K, yeah, you will get very quickly to this terabyte limit. The business plans, in theory, offers more storage space, but you're still limited to five terabyte per user. As far as aesthetics go, if Ice Drive was a human, I'd be the first to date it. It's just beautiful. That was weird, wasn't it? Anyway, uh, the point I'm making is that the design of the user interface is one of the best around. It's super clean and minimal and sorting and viewing my files is just a joy. And behind every beautiful body, obviously, there needs to be a powerful engine. So how does iStrive do here? very well if you ask me. There are no file size restrictions for uploads, so if you're working with 8K video, then you can relax and enjoy the ride. Uploads and downloads took around seven minutes for five gigabytes, which is not too bad at all. iStrive is another service that offers zero knowledge encryption. The good news is it comes at no extra cost, meaning it's incorporated into the price of your plan. A slight downer though, it's not available on the free plan, but don't worry, I've got something coming up for those that want a free plan with zero knowledge encryption. Options for storage space could be better with the highest amount available being three terabytes on its monthly and annual plans. And honestly, for your standard content creator, I'm certain this will be fine. And if you do need more storage space, then you can pay a one-time payment on the lifetime plans and unlock up to 10 terabytes of storage space. iStrive always has deals on the lifetime plans and right now you can get 10 terabytes of storage for a one-time payment of around $1,200. Up next for you, I have sync.com. I and many of the staff at CloudWords use sync.com because security and privacy is best in class. Zero knowledge encryption is available on all plans, including the free plan, so only you and those you authorize can access your video content. Sync.com is also one of the best services for those who lose their password. You see, typically, with zero knowledge encryption, if you forget your password, the software developer can't help you access your account, meaning you can't technically access your files. Sync.com has some workarounds for this. You can reset your password locally by simply installing the desktop version of the app without giving up your level of encryption. Alternatively, you can enable email-based password recovery. Now, this means Sync.com can access your password, but the company says it doesn't remove zero-knowledge encryption as only its automated services have access to your details. Well, you gotta believe that, right? Okay, let's move away from security and privacy. Sync.com has no file size limits, so that's good news. You can also get up to six terabyte of storage space on personal plans, and here comes the kicker, unlimited storage space on team plans. <laughs> and that's more good news. It's the only cloud storage service with true unlimited storage that I can personally recommend. So you never need to worry about storage space ever again, even if you are a raw shooter and process multiple 8K camera streams and have a 60 terabyte NAS, you can really upload all the data you want. But, if you are looking for a fast performer, <sighs> sync.com ain't that guy, unfortunately. Uploads and downloads were between 14 to 15 minutes, making it much slower than the other services. Look, sync.com isn't the best performer and <sighs> it doesn't have the best design either, but it's secure. And for those that really do value privacy, it's the best place to store your video content. It's even affordable too, even for unlimited storage. So premium 
privacy at a reasonable cost seemed like a no-brainer and a pretty good deal to me. If you've been following along, then it's no surprise that the best cloud storage for video creators is, drumroll, pCloud. <laughs> Where do I begin? Okay, let's start with the built-in media player because that's what I love most about this platform. I can preview my videos. I can view, you can view your videos content either on the web or on the browser, on the mobile app. Playback is available in full high resolution. You can also store music files, create playlists, which I think is really, really handy if you need a home for your soundtracks um, to your videos. Now, don't expect like a super fluid video playback of 8K video footage. I mean, that's probably not possible, but you get the idea. You can preview files and um, preview files in a lower resolution. pCloud imposes no file size limits, and you can access up to 10 terabytes of storage space on its highest plan. Oh, and the best news, all your files can be protected through zero knowledge encryption. So there will be no snooping or scanning by pCloud employees or anyone else for that matter. Speedwise, pCloud performs very well. It's not as quick as iDrive, iDrive or Google Drive, but at an average of eight minutes for uploads and six minutes for downloads, it's nothing to scoff at in our standard test performance configuration. Performance was very consistent too, so it's good news there as well. If I'm looking at pCloud with a faster internet connection, I can upload 15 gigabytes, 20 gigabytes in a couple of minutes. For example, this video might be anywhere around 20 to 25 gigs, maybe a bit less, maybe a bit more. And here at the office, we're connected with a 300 megabit per second upload speed connection and pCloud handles faster bandwidths pretty well. It seems to handle single large files better than a lot of smaller ones, but that's what I'm using it for anyway here in my, in my video studio. And if you are a wedding videographer who has maybe like hundreds of smaller B-roll clips of a second or three or five or, or, or 10 seconds, that might add considerable time to, to the time it takes to upload the files to pCloud because yeah, it processes smaller files a bit, a bit slower and it takes, it takes longer. As great as all this sounds, I've got to be honest, pCloud isn't perfect. Zero knowledge encryption comes at an extra cost on top of the standard cost for your cloud storage and the 10 terabytes of storage space is only available on a lifetime plan, meaning you'll need to pay over a thousand dollars upfront to access that amount of storage space. You can go for the pCloud business plan if you want higher storage amounts or prefer month-to-month -month payments over the above-mentioned lifetime plan investment. 20 terabytes would set you back around $200 per month, but you also get multi-user access and a few other business perks that you can check out on their website. I also leave a link to pCloud, obviously, in the description box below so you can check out the plans at your own leisure. But honestly, overall, when you look at what pCloud offers, I think it's worth every penny. And while upfront costs may seem daunting, over the course of a lifetime, it's actually exceptional value. Annual plans are also available, but they max out at two terabytes of storage space. I'm going to leave, as I said before, a link to our full pCloud review, our written review that you can check out in um, the description box. And you can see if that works out for you as well. So wrapping it all up, Think about what type of video creator are you and what it is that you need. How many gigabytes per week do you actually shoot? Is security important? Do you have collaborators or external clients you work with? Or is it just some fun videos on YouTube that you shoot once a month? I'd love to know which cloud storage service you use for your videos because I'd like to learn from you, the user, as well. Let me know in the comments below. Also let me know which of the services mentioned you're going to choose if you haven't already. I'm always curious to know. Don't forget to subscribe and smash a like and tap the bell icon so you get notified when I next publish a video. See you soon.